Okay, in order to install this Tizen Studio, you need to go to developer.tizen.org, development slash Tizen Studio slash download, and then you can download it over here. There are two different ways of downloading it. The first one is with the IDE installer, uh, where you will get the ID, IDE setup, uh, like I just shown you. And the second one is through the command line tool. So in this tutorial, we're going to do this with the ID installer. So that's the thing you need to do. You need to click, you need to click on the 64-bit. Okay. And what this is going to do is this is going to start start installing the Tizen Studio. You also have options uh, for Windows or Mac. So we are going with Mac for this particular uh, tutorial. And uh, also. you should have around 5 to 6 GB available on your laptop or computer because it's going to take that much of space uh, for running it and, and I think minimum 4 GB RAM should be there on your laptop okay uh, while this is installing I'll also like to let you know that in case if you'd like to check which version of the Tizen Studio will be compatible with your television you can come in over here on this URL and you can check as to you know which is your TV model is it the 2020 model 2019 2018 as you can see over here that the different versions of the Tizen studio are mentioned over here as to what is required so you can check your TV uh, there's a model number as well I think line up TV model name uh, not model number but model name and you can check over here which one is your television and you can accordingly you can uh, install the Tizen studio and, and work on that okay awesome Okay, so it's installed now. Let's double click it. So now it's going to go ahead and open this up. You can see it's verifying. All right, there's the installer. You can use this. Okay, you may have to check the Mac. You may need to allow this in your Mac. So go to security, privacy, and just unlock it. And then go back to general. Click OK. And click on open anyway. Let's open it. I'm going to close this one. So now it's initializing. There you go, you accept it. Click again, install. And now it's going to go ahead and install it. Okay. So it's installed now, it's creating some shortcuts. So it's going to go ahead and create a directory called workspace uh, in your com on your computer. And that's and that's where it's going to keep all of your projects. You can even open those projects in your code editor like VS Code or PHP Storm or Atom, etc. And you can directly go ahead and edit the code there in your code editor. So it's processing. Okay, so this is this is the package manager, and uh, you need some extensions from this. So we don't need all of this; we don't require it. In case if you're developing for mobile, um, etc., then you need it. But uh, this is my extension, and this is what I'm concerned about: the TV extension. I'm going to hit install over here because that's what I want to install: the TV extension. So it's going to give me the emulator and the web web app development environment. So that's what I want to install as an extension SDK. Okay, so let it go ahead and install it. You can see the progress over here. It's installing it. i uh, just like to uh, answer a few questions that you may have. If you're wondering how am I going to uh, take control of the remote control, how would I uh, you know, add events so that when the user clicks on the remote control, uh, those events get triggered and some action take place. So for that, uh, you can use uh, JS Spatial Navigation. Uh, this is the library that you can use so you can just include that as a script in your uh, head tag and then you can add these events so whenever there is uh, whenever it finds a, a 
a tag HTML a tag or it finds anything that's with uh, a class of focusable it's going to make that element focusable in the television because on television you have a different API that works in fact on TV you have something called web API that works over there so when you include this you will get all of the uh, in you will get all of the functions available for web API for example it, you can also generate a unique TV ID with the help of this okay so you can learn more about this and um, so this makes it for this piece of code makes your elements focusable and then you can add your event on like key down or enter key etc and then go ahead and uh, add your events there so so the different events that will be available you can check uh, that you can use for your television okay there is some demo available as well so if you click on the demonstration click on like basic HTML and there you can see that you can use your mouse control for now but on television this is how it's going to work you, you know you, you're making these elements as focusable and then you can do an inspect element and see what properties are applied to this you will also have a code for this as to you know what is being applied so you can see this has got like the, uh, the focusable and this is non focusable that's why you can't focus them okay so the different examples available that you can use for your testing purposes and then you have the events also so if you click on this uh, these are your events uh, there are different events that are applied so if you do an inspect element and if you check console uh, and then do like a click or something you can see that unfocus uh, these are the events that are applied focus alright so there you go you have some enter events as well so these are the focus events and if you hit enter enter up you can see enter down yeah on the left hand side if I hit enter I'm gonna get that event fired so if you're dealing with forms etc if you need some information from the user and you can also integrate different API's so you can use uh, you know maybe a normal JavaScript fetch API or XEOS for that matter and then just use Babel to convert them into modern browser code that the browsers can understand okay so these are the things that you can do with it all right awesome so you can see it's installed 100% we can you close this package manager uh, in fact yep let's close it hit OK and then if you have a look at it you can see that you've got an installer you have package manager which we were currently working on you have device manager you have Tizen studio emulator manager all of that stuff here okay so we're interested in the Tizen studio right now which is this one so let's click on that and let's open it up. So we're going to open the Tizen Studio. So as you can see, it's asking where you want to save your workspace. So by default, it's saving inside of my root and then inside of the workspace directory. You can change it if you like, and then you can launch it like so. And even when you are using your code editor, you can use uh, the same directory to open the code and just directly start editing it just that every time you go ahead and uh, make changes you can either hit build automatically or you can do a manual build as well okay allow okay so there you go this is our Tizen studio is that wonderful great